I'm Josh Welton uh, from Brown Dog Welding uh, here in Ice Nine Shop. Uh, today we're going to be working on building an oil tank for Panic Attack for the Triumph. Uh, for the material, I'm using 5052 aluminum. I chose that because it's more ductile. It's uh, not going to be as brittle as 6061 would be. Uh, shaking around on the bike, I think that's uh, that's a bonus. Uh, for a filler rod, I'm using 4043. Uh, 5356 would be stronger but it would also be more brittle. And with the joints we're doing, which are mainly butt joints and corner joints, the strength isn't gonna be as much of an issue. Uh, the 4043 is actually just as strong in, in, a, in a butt joint. Um, so we're gonna try to, try to, I've got it tacked together somewhat and i uh, gonna try to take some measurements and some angles and then I'll be cutting it apart, cleaning it and putting it back together. I'm using my Dynasty 200 on this, uh, the, the trusty, trusty Dynasty that I've had for, for a long time in my shop. I love using it for aluminum. Uh, it's just a really nice, clean arc. Uh, I can adjust the, the, the balance and the, uh, the frequency to get the, the bead profile that I want. Um, I've got an air-cooled Wellcraft torch uh, that I use a gas lens on. The gas lens I like because it smooths out the puddle. But for me personally, in my shop, it's nice because I can actually save on gas. I can turn the gas down and still get the nice, the nice bead that I want. Uh, it's, a, it's a flex head, um, which, which helps uh, you, you have a little more control over the torch. It is air-cooled, uh, so you're not going to be doing you know, 20 feet of welds with it. But for something like this, that should, be, that should be plenty. All right, what I have here is I have the oil tank. I've got the general shape that I want. Uh, I've got it measured out so that it's roughly going to be three quarts, maybe a little bit more. Uh, at this point, I'm going to take some measurements because I want to create an angle on one side of it where the filler is going to go. The filler then will be easier to access as opposed to up and down where the frame might be in the way. Uh, I'm actually not certain where I'm going to mount it yet, but that'll give me some flexibility. So right now I'm going to take those measurements. Uh, it might not technically be the correct way to do this, but I usually just, when I dig into a project, I do whatever works. So what I did is I, I'm going to scribe a couple of lines here on my, I still draw on my desk, just like in school. And then I'm going to match up. It's a 45 degree angle. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to tack here and here, and then I'll cut it while it's, while it's actually in this shape. So what I'll end up doing is once I have it how I want it, I'm going to take this all apart, clean it, and then tack it back together and weld it up. Okay, what I'm doing here is I'm going to tack this piece on onto the rest of the, the, the tank so that then I can measure from here to here to get that kind of uh, that piece for the angle there. Uh, I've just got this down to weight it down so that it, it fits on the edges nicely. And when tacking aluminum, especially with 4043, uh, it tends to want to crack, so you want to put a nice full tack on it so that it stays put. I'm going to get a rough measurement of this to cut a piece out and then I'll fit it on here and uh, kind of get a better fit after that. It's uh, about five and a half by just under four. Looks pretty even across. I'm going to set this up here and uh, mark out some lines so I can get a rough idea of the shape so I can try to sand down the curve so it fits a little better. So I got the lines marked out and now I'll uh, sand it to fit. What I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to shorten this uh, so that this lip is below this edge here so you have a nice seam to weld. Get a nice flat weld there. What I did here is I fixed an edge. Uh, when, I, when I made a cut, I cut it a little bit too far. Uh, and to do that, uh, there's a little trick to, to filling in edges or to fixing edges, whether it's aluminum or uh, tool steel or any kind of steel, really. 
Uh, if possible, you want to hold the torch at an angle so your tungsten's pointing up towards the edge or, or almost parallel with the edge. And then you can feed the filler in from the back side. Uh, that, that way, uh, you're not eating into the base metal, you're adding the filler onto the top of it because you're not so worried about getting really deep penetration. You want to add that metal to the edge without getting undercut. Uh, and then you can smooth it flat and, and uh, get a nice clean edge. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lay this piece out. This is where our filler neck is going to go. So I'm going to try to center it up and then we're going to drill a hole in it right now, uh, which is where this will end up going. I'm not going to worry about tacking this piece on here now. I know how it's, it's basically where I want it to go. Uh, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to kind of eyeball where I want the fill plug to go. All right, this is going to be a return line. So what I want to do is this is going to come up towards the top of the tank. And so I'm going to measure exactly where that's going to come to. Uh, eventually this will have a T. I'll weld this and make a T right here. And this will return up to the top of the motor to oil the rockers. And then this will feed into the oil tank. I think right now I'm gonna cut it apart, break the tacks, clean it all up, and then uh, lay out a couple of poles and reassemble. When I put this together, I just, kind of a quick way to keep track of what parts go where. Uh, I, I letter them. It's, it's probably easy to tell now just because I cut this angle in it, but uh, yeah, it's C, D, A, B with the arrow pointing to the next one so it goes in alphabetical order. Uh, and then on the back, because it's not a perfectly you know square piece, I put the letters to match up with which side it goes to. So I'm using Scotch-Brite pads. Uh, I still see people use sandpaper a lot and things like that, or sanding discs, grinding discs. You do not want to do that when you're cleaning aluminum. Uh, what happens is uh, the, the carbon or the carbides from the sandpaper or from the grinding disc ends up embedding itself in the aluminum and you get dirty welds. Uh, so you can use a, a stainless steel wire brush, a stainless steel wire wheel. I like using the Scotch-Brite pads. It's the same deal. Uh, it doesn't embed itself in the aluminum and it cleans off the oxide. What I'm doing here is I've got the, the butt joints, it's, uh, it's 0.1 aluminum, that's the thickness. Uh, so I've got them butted up tight together, all the edges are clean. What I'm doing is I get the puddle started and then you're waiting for the puddle to kind of drop. It, it drops through and a little hole will open up at the leading edge of the puddle and that's when you start adding your filler and going like that. And when you do that, what you get is you get a nice even bead on the top and underneath will almost look like it's, uh, it's, it's a flush joint, like it's, it's connected and it's a full penetrated weld, and that's what you're really going for. I'm trying to move the piece around, uh, do three, four inch welds at a time, uh, go from side to side, back and forth, up and down trying to move the heat around so the piece doesn't move around too much. Here's the oil tank as far as I've gotten it today. Uh, there's a few things left to do. I've got to do some tubing and a, and a bottom bung, but other than that, I'm pretty happy with how it's coming out. I got the overall shape I wanted. Uh, basically just started off with some 50-52 uh, sheet metal. Um, laid it out how I wanted it, basically tacked it up, cut it, uh, squared it up, cut it apart, and uh, cleaned everything. That With aluminum, it, cleanliness is godliness. You have to have it clean or it's just not going to weld nice. Uh, put it back together, squared everything up, and uh, put the filler, filler neck in there. Uh, and for now, that's pretty much it. Uh, I used the, the Dynasty 200 on this. Uh, it's nice because 
you've got a small package, so it's portable, you can take it anywhere, and the fact that it can weld aluminum like this uh, is just a bonus. There's so much adjustability with the frequency and the, 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 the balance. Uh, I, that's all I use for welding aluminum.